particularly in the West, the issue of married priests. I mean, a lot of these big, big issues have not really been addressed fully. Emily Buchanan, our World Affairs Correspondent, thanks very much. Well, with me is Cardinal Cormac Murphy O'Connor, who led the church in England and Wales and is now Archbishop Emeritus of Westminster. Uh, Cardinal O'Connor, first of all, your reaction to this news. Did you have any sense at all the last time you saw the Pope that he was struggling with his health? No, I have. I did have the impression that he was getting weaker, though, and uh, I saw him just a few months ago, and uh, there's no doubt that age and the, and I suppose the struggle of of coping with such an extraordinary, uh, onerous task was telling on him. He's now, as I was said, eighty-five, and so um, I was surprised but not shocked. <laughs> And uh, I think I I seem to remember that back in in, uh, 2002, he he said to somebody that one day a pope would have to resign, uh, given age and and so on. So to that extent, I'm not surprised. But I am saddened because I have affection, real affection for for Pope Benedict, who I met on many, many occasions as a a cardinal and then as, uh, as pope. And uh, people will be talking about his legacy and the troubles that he's had. But I'd like to think of his legacy, really, as he came, when he came to Britain. Uh, a legacy, uh, not just as an intellectual, a scholar, but as a good shepherd, <laughs> as, a, as, as someone who came over to the people of this country and far beyond, as, uh, as one who cared for his people, who uh, had a deep Christian Catholic faith, and uh, the encyclicals that he wrote, you know, were about uh, charity and hope. And he would write one about faith. And those are the things that are more important than the peripheral troubles that happen in every papacy. You were part of the conclave which elected him. Were you at all concerned at electing an old pope? Was this an issue at all among your colleagues? I mean, his predecessor, John Paul II, had only been 58 when he was elected. Pope. That's right. I, I think when, when he was elected, it was a surprise for some people, and I think it was a surprise to him, because uh, when, when you're that age, you think, well, you know, I've passed uh, the, the sell-by date for being pope. Of course, they do uh, say young cardinals prefer old popes, because it keeps <laughs> their uh, opportunities for the future yeah, open. but there was a pretty well came to a nearly unanimity at the end. He was elected very quickly. Uh, and I think that the cardinals, after a very long pontificate of, of Pope John Paul uh, II, thought, well, this man, who of such integrity, of such intelligence, of such spirituality, would be right for how many years it was to be. Uh, you uh, will, uh, as Emily alluded to, known that uh, John Paul's health was deteriorating for a long period. Do you think, having witnessed that, that may have played a part in Benedict making his decision now, rather than perhaps leaving it and leaving it and seeing if, if he could hold out for a longer period and, and remain an active pontiff. Well, I can't, I can't say that because I don't really know, but I wouldn't have been surprised because I know the last few years of Pope John Paul's pontificate were very difficult ones. His health was in grave decline and, uh, and it was just a question, really, how long could he go on? Could it in... be a useful precedent in that sense, that, you know, that this should be a job that people can feel that they can give up if they no longer feel up to it. Well, I think in that sense, I think it's a precedent uh, because there are only two or three other popes who've resigned. That goes back hundreds of years. Uh, So uh, the the only thing is, I think think that the next pope, whoever he is, that uh, it will be expected he goes along as long as he can. And uh, and if that is that to a great age, provided he's in good health, good. Uh, The church and its future after... Uh, the difficulties that is endured. We talked about the child abuse scandal. We have heard uh, in recent months concerns about the way the Vatican itself is run. There can't necessarily be a good time when you can leave uh, the post vacant, but this must be a time when people will have anxieties about the direction of the church and whether there is enough of a grip and the kind of grip that an incoming pope can put upon it. Well, I think that uh, just as Pope Benedict has left his mark in many, very good ways uh, on the church, and there will be many people today who will be very, very sad at his uh, uh, resignation. At the same time, uh, when the cardinals go out, uh, as I will be with them uh, for the 10 days before the electors go into elect. You can't vote. You're, you're I, too I, old to vote yes, now. So. Over 80, you don't vote. Right. But I will be there with the other cardinals discussing. For so about, there won't be a UK uh, vote, as it were. No, well, uh, the, the uh, Cardinal uh, Archbishop of Edinburgh will, will be there, but sadly there won't be anybody voting from... Uh, 
from uh, England or, or Wales. Uh, but uh, I'm glad to be able to be there to actually uh, say what I want to say about the church and about its needs. And, you know, uh, time goes on and uh, popes come and go. And, 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 and I think the, the voice of, of, of the church will always be heard. And sometimes it can be not very acceptable, but that's not the point. The point is it's there to herald and to speak out what it believes to be the truth of Jesus Christ. And finally, could he actually yet be an influential voice in, in that decision, since he, unlike so many of his predecessors, will actually be still around? Oh, yes. I, I don't think he'll be actually coming to the, <laughs> to the, to the conclave. Uh, I, I think he'll now slip away quietly, possibly, I don't know where, possibly back to his home uh, town or in Bavaria and, uh, uh, and live a quiet life there, which I think he wants for study and prayer and, and, and well, God, God bless him in, in that. And, uh, and of course, uh, he would have a direct influence. But the fact that he's still living, we will all continue to remember him and what he's given to the church over these past seven, eight years. Cardinal Cormac Murphy O'Connor, Archbishop of